world and welcome back to, or welcome to, the Pop Culture Patter Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Callum Brown, and today's guest is Scottish filmmaker James Price. I reached out to James on social media to come on the podcast and was blown away at how supportive he was. We'd never met before we recorded this episode, but I've instantly fallen in love with him, and he is such a gorgeous soul and one of my favourite humans. James and I get into it about our love of films and his new film, Dog Days, which will be available on BBC iPlayer from the 7th of April. Please check it out as soon as it drops. You won't regret it. As always, this podcast was recorded with my good friends at the Podcast Studio Glasgow, the only podcast studio in Scotland to offer 18 years of experience in the medium and run by a pioneer in UK podcasting. For more information or to book a session, please visit www www.podcaststudioglasgow.com And before we get into this, a quick word from our sponsor. This podcast is brought to you by Brown & Co Properties, an award-winning family-run estate agency based in Whitburn, West Lothian. With a property mark protected service for a fixed fee, we are your go-to agent for expert property sales advice in the area. Get on the go with Brown & Co. James Price, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Cal. I appreciate it, man. You're very welcome. And first of all, how are you? I not bad, but I'm surviving, man. I'm hanging in there. Yeah, it's been a crazy couple of weeks, man. It's been cool. It's been cool. Yeah, and you've got uh, a film coming out on the Glasgow Film Festival on Sunday. I, I believe. do, I do, man. Um, yep, yep, yep. Now this episode is going to go out next Tuesday, so we've missed that. But I have taken to social media yep. to try and promote the film. Oh, thank you so much. No, I noticed that, man. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, a few other people fucking helped me. Sell the thing out. Can yeah. we swear on here? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, you I can say whatever you want, but it's not I, Michelle McManus here. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> and that was terrifying. <laughs> God, that, all I was thinking the rest of the interview was, what word did I say? Yeah. I didn't even know what I'd said. She, uh, I, she I, I was, I was watching audience. it. I, I think you were just like fucking. Uh, I know, it was very quick, guy. Yeah. I know. But, I mean, she's asking you on a radio show. What, what, what do you expect? I know, that's it. I know. Do your research. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you that are going to listen that don't know, can you tell us a wee bit about the film? Aye, of course, man. So, um, Dog Days is a, it's a little kind of dark. I've been describing it as a kind of feel good dark drama set in Dundee. And it's about a, a kind of young fellow from Glasgow that's sleeping rough because he wants to be close to his kid who lives with his ex partner in Dundee. And um, it goes viral busking a cover of Frankie Miller's Darling. And then at the same time, he's got a kind of tit for tat thing going on with a drug dealer. So, he's caught between these two worlds. And he's, it's like he can either pursue his musical talent or keep living the way he's been living and um, yeah, go a darker path yeah. and um, yeah so it's, it's about a kind of guy caught between two worlds and uh, it's, it's kind of just about being an artist in Scotland and, and self-sabotage and stuff that we put on ourselves and yeah. it's it was a man yeah it's, it's turned out a lot stronger than I expected it to it was um, it was a tough shoot but we, we got through it yeah and you're going to release it as a longer version of it or was it originally planned as a series or so yeah man so I was always praying weirdly that this would happen Um that they would, I thought they would just they'd play all the episodes together. Mm. Um, so six episodes ago, and I played on April seventh. Um, wow. And this version is sixty minutes long, and it's cut for broadcast. So it's they're both very different animals, but they're, they're, um, this version is a lot darker, and it is a lot more filmic and cinematic. Whereas the iPlayer version is kind of, there's more room to breathe, there's a lot of laughs that are kind of cut out in this version. But um, I love both of them. Like, I, I, I still don't know which version I like best. So it's, I'm yeah. glad there's kind of these two different I know. Uh, yeah, versions out there. It's whatever you prefer, isn't it? That's it, like... yeah, yeah. But it's almost like the iPlayer version is the uncut and extended version, mm. technically, because it's like 18 minutes longer. And um, yeah, there's just a bit more in there. What was it about Dundee? Because you normally set your films in Glasgow, don't you? Yeah, man. Yeah, do you know, I was just, I was just looking for somewhere, yeah, somewhere different. I wanted the, I wanted the characters kind of be isolated. I didn't want to be on his home turf. Um, so I wanted to be outside. And I, I feel like I did everything in Glasgow. So before I start setting things in England, I thought I'm, I'll <laughs> start visiting other cities in Scotland. And a big part of the story is kind of about the fake Valium epidemic that's kind of plaguing Scotland and. Um, the one place other than Glasgow, well, that seems to be quite a prominent thing, if not worse, is Dundee. So it, it just kind of felt like a natural fit. And uh, the more I went up, I just fell in love with the city as well. Just in this, it's such a kind of small, tight knit city. Everybody knows each other. It's really, really, yeah, just something really 
Like it's some beautiful architecture. Yeah, there's some really good architecture uh, in um, in Dundee. I've only been there once, um, and I don't know what the reason was, but uh, uh, I can just remember there's like a big curve kind of street that um, is quite cinematic looking. It's yeah. kind of similar to the one in Edinburgh. Um, yeah, I know you're actually. Yeah, 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 right there, yeah, yeah. I just thought, yeah, this would be quite cool. Cool shot. Sure. I'm, I'm, uh, as I said, I'm a, a lover of film, so yeah, I've yeah. always got that kind of visual aspect of. Like... I just that's what you're thinking. I'm the same man. I know, I know, I know, I know. That's my whole life. I, everything's just thinking about how oh, would this be like in a movie. <laughs> and um, what's the what's the anxiety like of releasing something that, especially something the the, the film festival, because you have to go up and speak. Yeah about the film what, what's the anxiety in the build up lead up to that oh but it's terrific man. yeah it was, um, because like, I've, I come from a short film background like, I, I do feel like people are more forgiving and relaxed when it comes to reviewing short films because they know it's been a low budget they know it's been hanging me but this I think people just because it's my biggest thing yet I feel like people will, won't be as easy on it as they would have been if it was a short you built so up I, that brand. Yeah, I'm terrified. I'm absolutely terrified. I'm running on like four hours sleep a week. And um, yeah, I'm just racked with anxiety. Not sure how people will react to it. Hoping people like it. I've tested it out on a bunch of people. Um, one of the few people was kind of making me feel good about it is an actor pal called Jordan O'Hara who's convinced that it's the best thing I've ever did. And, um, wow. and he's not casting it. So like, I feel he wouldn't, he wouldn't lie to me. Yeah. You know? he's, <laughs> but, he's not selling a film. Yeah, he's in, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, it's, it's terrifying, man. It's terrifying. I did. I, I'm not. Like, I'll be fine on the Sunday. I, I'm. It's, I, I think it's the screening and everything's going to be fine. I'm, I, I think actually, when it's when it goes on the iPlayer, right. I'll probably be a bit more scared too because I think that's when like the TV type reviews will come in. And uh, I did a BBC Four show called Skint last year. Right. And I did two. I directed two episodes. I directed one with Peter Mullen, and I directed one with Michael Sock in it from This Is England. All right. And it was it was great. And they got all these great reviews. The Guardian, everybody loved it. But it was like two bad reviews, and um, one of them singled one of mine out, and it confirmed like everything I was terrified of, everything I thought about it was wrong with this guy confirmed for me, and that's all I remember. I don't remember the good reviews. All I remember was two bad ones. So I was going to ask that. How, yeah, the review type. Like I know that's a massive part of it, but how much do you care about it? Because I kind of I'm paralleling it to this because yeah. for me people reviewing the show or giving feedback or whatever is everything. Yeah. And yeah. I've not had any negative feedback yet, as of yet, but um, what is it like with that, with that criticism? Do you, do, you, do you not focus on the positive and focus more on the negative? Because Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, I think I'm just saying your brain just like, it's like, yeah, your brain just like, the negative is real. The positive is just people being nice, you know? So it's, um, yeah. it's strange. Um, and you don't, I've not really had it at a proper level yet because... You know, there's not many people reviewing short films, you know what I mean? So it's like you don't you only get a little taste of it. Yeah. Um, you know, you get like the Scottish some Scottish public like the skinny and that'll really back you up and stuff. But um yeah, with this it'll be like a proper, you know, baptism by fire with like real reviews and scary ones, you know, and like yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything's great. The actors were great, music's great, directing was pish. <laughs> that's what that's, that's what I'm waiting on. Yeah. No, I don't think that's the case. And as I was saying in the the, the room earlier on, like I have watched a few of the films back to back. Right. Um dropping off Michael, um Concrete and Flowers and Amazing. Boys Night. Yeah man. And appreciate sure it. Thank you so much. I just it. absolutely loved them. And you know I was like, I want more. And I guess that's what's good when you, you get behind somebody that you're like, they're always going to give you more. Oh, I appreciate that, man. But, yeah, thank you so much. Um, I, I, I just thought, you know, there's a, a, a culture in Scotland of filmmakers and there's people out there that don't have a name or people that are not re like regular in people's minds, but yep. there is that there. And how do you get these people recognised and, yeah. and show off their talent? Because they're bloody good at it and you're one of them. And, oh, that means a lot, you know, man. No, thank you so much. No, I know it is strange, man. It is strange because you do feel kind of almost you're in, like, you're in a kind of little contained bubble, you yeah. know, and there's not a massive, you know, so I'm always like, blown away when somebody says to me, like, I've seen one of my films. I'm, did you did you see it? That's cool. That all blows my mind. Like, I'm just seeing. I'm sitting in Bog Grill and I'm like, you just you just think nobody's watching it. So it's like it's always amazing when somebody's actually seen stuff, man. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I've only found you now. I've not seen them on the big screen, but I'm coming on Sunday. To, oh no, to, to I appreciate the movie, it, man. So. Oh, thank you so much, man. I it'll, be, it'll be a good evening, man. It'll be a good wee day, man. It'll be cool. I'm looking forward to it. Um, while I was prepping for next week's guest, Paul Morris, who's yeah, a, a, a friend of yours, um, that's how I discovered you because you were both on a podcast together. 
and I just was immediately drawn to you. I yep. was like, who is this guy? And then you were speaking about your love of Michael Mann films. Your true romance was one of your Desert Island picks. Yeah, yeah, 100%. One of the yeah, first ones, yeah. I think you said. And uh, you were talking about Terminator 1 over Terminator 2, and you yep. preferred Terminator 1. And I was like, this guy gets it. I, I, I do, man. Like, I, do, I, do, I, do, I think James Cameron has to make an um, 18 rated movie again, man. I, I, I think that's what we need from him. Go um, back to the roots. Because, yeah, man. Because Terminator 1 is a horror film. Film, man, it's yep. terrifying. Ah, it's a slasher. Yeah, it's this relentless killing machine that you can't reason with. It's just coming for you. Aye. And it's like neon and the city escape. I just loved it, man. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It, it is gritty. I know it's, it's supposed so to be gritty, gritty man. But yeah, man. Like... But, but compared to like, I love Terminator 2. Like that was, you know, it's like fucking some one of the best sequels I've ever made. But um, there's something about the the darkness of Terminator 1 and the hopelessness is just really relentless and, yeah. like, uh, and just intensifies, intensifies. Yeah, and I wonder how much he drew from John Carpenter's Halloween for that movie because that's a it's good, kind of that's similar. That's a really good, that's a really good comparison that I've never considered. Did they? Yeah, man. Because you look at Sarah Connor, yeah. you look at Laurie Strode, yeah, yeah. they're kind of the sweet girl next yep, door. Yep, yep. And then, obviously, Terminator 2 was released after oh, Jamie Lee Curtis came back to Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of made her like a Sarah Connor type in the new movies. That's true, true, actually. That's a really good, that's really good. That's been what I've done. That's a formula of coffee. I don't even have considered that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You say whatever you want about the new movies. I, Halloween's my franchise. That's yep. what I fell in love with. For no, horror definitely. Movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know everybody's got their own ones. And um, I love the first two, man. I think the first two are absolutely great. Yeah. I love the hospital setting in the second one. I love the way it just kind of, I guess because as a kid I had the VHS, it was Halloween, and then Halloween 2 came on right after it. Yeah. And, um, the way it just continues from that night, uh -huh. I thought it was amazing, like, uh, really cool. I mean, there's so much history with that film and yeah. its own Halloween 2 is that they made Laurie and Michael uh, brothers and sisters. I know, I know, yeah, people yeah, are yeah. like, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I think it worked for the most part. Yeah. Um, and I always compare Terminator and Alien the same yeah, because yeah. Alien's a slasher movie in space. Oh yeah, claustrophobic. Yeah, yeah this thing's taking people out one by one. Ah, but Alien One is the one for me too, yeah. man. It was, yeah, man. it's like so. Um, yeah, every time I watch it, it's like uncomfortable. You know, I mean, you feel like you're on this spaceship with them, and there's and just it's yeah, terrifying, it's terrifying, man. Yeah, like, yeah. That the the costume for the xenomorph is terrifying. In yeah, its own, man. Oh yeah, the, the, yeah, terror. I know, I know. Yeah, like, see all that. the things that they do with it, like when the chains and. Um, the guy walks into the hall and there's the chains and it's yeah. hanging in the chains and you can just, just about make yeah, it out. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the bit that always got me was when the guys in the kind of, kind of, what do you call them, like air can trap yeah, 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 and yeah. they turned around and it just like... I know, it's amazing, like, man. I know, every time. Especially for the time as well. Like, it's it's such a timeless movie. Like, it's aged so well. Yeah. I actually think it's aged better than Aliens. Aye. There's parts of Aliens you watch and you're like, oh... Yeah, you know, like I have like you know, special effects have kind of moved past that a little bit, but um, but Alien One is very like holds up, you know. I don't yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely again Ridley Scott, amazing. Yeah, should yeah. go back to that, but he, he did go back to Prometheus and uh, yeah, man. I yeah, think but, Prometheus over time. I really enjoy Prometheus. I actually really enjoy Prometheus. Um, I wasn't blown away by the follow up. As mm. much, um, but the concept of Prometheus, I thought was stunning, and um, yep. yeah, I loved that the whole, you know, yeah. seeding life thing. I thought it was genius, man. Um, yeah, I really was a massive fan, and I thought it, I thought it was a really well. I just think people had a, a movie in their head, and when that movie isn't what it is, mm. you think it's bad, and it's not that, you know. It's, They're expecting another alien movie, exactly, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, like James Cameron again came in and did a sequel and yep. a sequel aliens 2 and a terminator yep. 2 yep, yep. you know which are great in their own right definitely, as well definitely yeah, but, yep. um i i get the feeling like they kind of change science fiction um because science fiction is drawn out and it's yeah, slow man. Yeah, yeah. a lot it has its audience and there's yeah. people that don't understand it like, that was too fucking slow but they're actually the, some of the best made food oh films, definitely but, man yeah 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 um, yeah <clears throat> i just feel like uh James Cameron kind of set the expectations for sci-fi a bit too high because everybody yeah. thought we're going to get scenes where everybody's plasma rifles and yeah all that. plasma rifles Michael Bay and yeah no no yeah, the Michael Bay effect, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and you were you were talking about your love of true romance as well which we yeah man about, I just think cause... it's an endlessly rewatchable movie man it's um, perfect and you know it's Ridley's brother Tony and I think Aye. Tony 
sometimes I think Tony might have been a better filmmaker than Eyes Man and uh, gets kind of pushed to the side because he pleased the audiences too much. Mm. Yeah. You know, he did like Top Gun, he did these big crowd pleasers. Beverly Hills Cop 2 is the best <clears> in the Beverly Hills Cop sequels. Absolutely. Um, I think he was just a master, man. I really do. And I, I think it's a shame we lost him, man. I think he was a, one of the best. Man on fire, man. You yeah. know, amazing, man. man. Still still solid. Yeah. yeah. Um, the thing with Ridley Scott that I heard recently was that he's now got that approach with, uh, he'll go to a studio and he'll say, listen, I'll make your movie on budget, yeah. on time, yeah, and it'll look great and it'll be great. Yeah, yeah. And he's kind of like doesn't he care about the story. It's no. all about like he'll, he'll make it competently. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because yeah, he makes so many movies. That... Yeah, man. Yeah, I saw House of Gucci and last year, last year in the cinema. Um, I enjoyed House of Gucci actually, man. Do you know if I got caught up in it in the cinema, I think it was like a nice little. It looked great. It was just I went along with the ride. I didn't know much about the story in real life, so yeah. I enjoyed it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm the same. Anything from Adam Driver really is uh, yeah. top drawer. Like, and he's working with Michael Mann, another one of you. Aye, Ferrari, man. Yeah, yeah. looks interesting. It looks great, and it? it looks cool. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm a big Adam Driver fan, man. I like Adam Driver yeah. a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. And and, and Michael Mann, we're, 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 we're talking about Truro uh, Heat. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And LA Takedown. Not oh, a lot yeah. of people know that it's a remake. I know. LA Takedown is such a fascinating little. Because it's almost like a. TV pilot. You know, there's been chat about this thing that we've just did. There's, um, mm. we're talking about doing an LA takedown heat type style thing where maybe just remake the whole thing as a bigger film. Yeah. Because it's quite, there's a lot of story in this and it's quite rushed. Not rushed, but it's a, it's a lot of story condensed in a short amount of time. And I think if we had more time to let it breathe, like we heat does it, it's like, you know, there's so much going on in heat. It becomes LA takedown went from this kind of little intense TV pilot to, it's really fleshed out ensemble piece. And you can he, see, yeah. obviously it's the same director, but you can see his vision. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's fascinating. Yeah, it's really interesting. And and some of that, I, I kind of felt like the actor's performance, there was times where the guy who was playing Vinny Anna yeah. was starting to sound a wee bit like Pacino. I know, it's weird, yeah, it's strange. Like, I know, how did he feel about that? I know, it's weird. Is that, is it maybe that what planted this he didn't make a man said? Uh, yeah, you another know, guy was being very De Niro. Yeah, he is. A, uh, he's actually was, uh, always loved him. He was shopping a lot of movies, man. What a car, man, do you know, this, this eats me alive. There was a time when I, like, I knew his name. Um, <laughs> I, but he's a great actor, man. Yeah, really cool, man. And, um, and the guy that was in the tour room that was in Terminator. Um, yeah, yeah, he's a stepdad in Terminator. Yeah, yeah he's, he's kind of Wayne growing early take down, is that yeah, right? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I, yeah. I thought he was better in the the the, the second one, Wayne Grow. I, I thought yeah, he oh, was. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a, he, he, he was an evil, intense. intense dude, yeah. There was something, there was a TV element to that version of Wayne Grow in um, LA Takedown. Um, but it's hilarious, actually, man. I don't I need, I need to spoil it. But um, <laughs> in LA Takedown, am I remember this correctly? When Vincent Hanna arrives at the hotel, Wayne Grows killed Neil McCauley. Mm. Is that right? Mm. And then Vincent Hanna just like cry kicks him off the roof. Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't a very Michael Mann. No. And no. Uh, it doesn't feel like a usual Michael Mann move. So it was, uh, yeah, it blew me away. I remember also being like, fuck it. That's it's like something you would see on a Jackie Chan or yeah, a John Claude man, Van Damme. Yeah, man, because I remember being like a straight front kick. Just kept him, yeah. I, I thought that was weird because obviously I'd yeah. seen Heat first and I, I didn't yeah. know that it was... Uh, a remake until I revisited Heat again. No, like same. 10 years I ago. remember being so excited. Like uh, I thought I'd found a new Michael Mann movie. <laughs> I was like a teenager. I was like, LA Take what's this? And I was watching. I was like, "Fuck, this is Heat. <laughs> what is going on, man? This is strange." It, it made it twice. And your appreciation for Manhunter as well. Yeah, man. Now, that's my, my, my probably one of my probably is my favorite movie. I think I have to say, yeah. And, and everybody disagrees with me <laughs> no no I, I totally get it yeah, yeah. you see right. Brett Ratner made Red Dragon and basically tried to copy it yeah he? man and he tried to I think he was trying to do LA Takedown to Heat mm. by you know recasting like who did they have in Dennis Reynolds was it Harvey Keitel he cast some great actors but it just didn't yes. work it just didn't come together man I don't know it wasn't, didn't work for me Aye. Um, I'd read the book so the book in Ratner's version that ending is the actual ending in the book and it's an interesting ending where the Tufferi goes to the uh, Will Graham's house, mm. which is pretty intense idea, but is it as good as no. Will Graham finding him in a Gada Davida playing? He's just taking people out with a shotgun, and Will Graham just jumps through a stained glass window, <laughs> grabs him. <laughs> it's so cool, man. It's like beautiful. It's just Michael Mann at his best. And uh, Brian Cox, people don't know that he was the first Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, and this man, yeah, man, the controversial. I always say this, and people always disagree with me, but 
Anthony Hopkins is Hannibal Lecter. I feel like I could probably batter him. <laughs> like one on one, I feel like I, it looks like it's like a uni lecturer or something. I don't know. Aye. Brian Cox and Man on a Man, I would not mess with, man. That's just no. a quiet, that dude is just, just so, like, you know, it's just so, played it just so naturally. There wasn't, I'm a big serial killer. It just like, it just played like a real terrifying Scottish dude. That, uh, it's amazing. Yeah, I know. Uh, I get what you mean by Anthony Hopkins. Uh, he, he went so big. <laughs> he went so big. He scarred me for life yeah. in that movie. I saw that movie far too young. Um, Do you know an, an actor from Heat who's in um, Silence of the Lambs that doesn't get the respect to, I think, gave a better performance than Anthony Hopkins is, um, oh, well, we'll know, what's his name? Buffalo Bill. Yeah. James, is it Ted Lewin? Ted Lewin. Ted Lewin. Ted Lewin. Yes. Yeah, man. Like, he, to me, gave a better performance and, and more of a daring performance than Anthony Hopkins and doesn't get half the the praise. Yeah, he's incredible. He's, like, a, a, a dead, creepy guy, but he's oh, a good character actor. Amazing actor, man. Yeah, he's in, he's, he's in, a, he's in a, a few like, movies I love, man. There's a Mickey Rourke two-pack movie <laughs> called Bullet. And it's actually a solid little movie. It's Omar from Michael K. Williams' first movie. Yeah, two pack cast him in it, and um, but Ted Levine's a brother. Uh, He's like a war veteran, and uh, he always just makes really interesting choices, man. Yeah. Really, as an actor, the guy, and I just I love. I'm, I'm obsessed. My favorite type of actors are character actors. Like yeah. that's what I love. Those, those are my dudes. Like I didn't start in an alien. Yeah. You know the guys that aren't traditionally good looking. I think it's paying me just because I'm not traditionally good looking. <laughs> that may be the issue, man. So I might be yeah, we gravitate towards he, character actors. How you Statton's absolutely fantastic amazing one of the best man underrated oh, so he's always the guy in the background and stuff and, and just so reliable like you know like you, you, you can whatever it is that little role he's in is his dad in Pretty in Pink if he's um, you know the grandfather in Alpha Dog like he'll 100% deliver man you just threw me back there with Alpha Dog that, that, that's, that's a solid movie, movie man that is a solid movie that is a dark really really like that movie really had a lot to say to you about young people just trying to be gangsters you know and yep. being not being not being from that world and it's a really powerful heartbreaking story and done yeah. so well and with yeah. such like delicacy man like um yeah man and ben foster oh man yeah i was i think that was the first time i saw him or took notice of him on that and he's yeah. phenomenal yeah I, he's underrated as well but take justin timberlake out of alpha dog and you've got Yep. I think people had in their mind, oh, Justin Timberlake's acting in this. I'm not going to Yeah, and he's it. actually great in it. Yep. He's solid, man. He's, he's, I know that's the thing that sometimes somebody's fame can out, can weigh something down or weigh down people's expect, expectations. It's a strange one, yeah, man. But I actually thought he was solid in it. When you revisit it, he did a, that was a good performance. Who's the other wee guy? Somebody curse, is it? Uh, uh, email, email hush. Oh, yeah, uh, man. Yeah, he's yeah, man. amazing. Great. He showed up in Once Time in Hollywood. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, right yeah, the yeah. End. That's the first, That was the last time I've seen him. The first time I've seen him in a while. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. And he was in that film, Into the Wild. I don't know if you oh, saw that. Oh, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, Sean Penn. Yeah. Sean Penn directed that. That's fucking... Oof. Talk to Sean Penn as well, man. I know, man. What a cool cat he is, man. Yeah. I know. I think that's the direction I'm going, man. What? He's he's just incredible. Amazing, but he also right? seems like such a good guy as well. Behind the scenes, he's like, Aye, a, man, he's, there's he's, a lot. He's, he's on a boat in Haiti, fucking, you know, he's like just like, holding a shotgun. It's like, what's happening here, man? There? <laughs> and he's saving the world in the. Uh, I always, know, he's a cool dude, man. It always reminds me of the scene in Mystic River. Oh, where my God. He finds out his daughter's dead. Oh, my God. That, that, that is... messes me up every time, man. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Oh. And, then, like, you can, and you know for a fact, Sean Penn said. Clint, tell yep. these fucking actors to hold me back. Yeah, like uh, I'm going to get past him. Yeah, so you tell him like, don't baby me, don't be like they're holding him back, man. He's going for it, you know. Like he's trying to get to that, see that body, and it's uh, oh, powerful. I know he's just incredible. And I, I, I messaged you when you were watching. I think Carly was way the other day, and I was just yeah, like Sean man. Penn and Pacino. Oh, man. I said Sean, Sean Penn and Carly was way. <laughs> David Kleinfeld, man, what a character and like. You know, it's unrecognisable. Like, Sean Penn is a... Chameleon. Yeah, he's, he's an anomaly where he's a leading man, but also a character actor. Yeah. You know, like, he can do both, and he's amazing at both. Aye. Yeah, you know, he's great. Did you see Bad Boys? The, the first one? The or... prison movie? Oh, no. So, Sean Penn did a movie that was, like, an American remake of Scum. Right. In the early 80s, and it's fantastic, man. Really great. It's kind of like a Hollywood version of... Alan Clark Scum. Yeah. And it's the Sean Penn in prison. It's really, really amazing, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah really great, out. really great. Um, because I was watching Point Break. Um, oh, man, man, Point Break is timeless. And by the way, Point Break's one of those movies where if you watch it, 
if it just came on and you just seen it, looks like it was made yesterday, man. Catherine yeah. Bigelow and James Cameron, like, I don't know how they do it, man, because I think my stuff, you know, you can tell that was shot in 2012. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Their stuff was shot in the 80s and early 90s and it still looks like it was made yesterday. Uh, there's something about Point Break that uh, obviously has a wee bit of inspiration for Heat as well. I don't know if they were maybe around about the same time. Yeah, I think Point Break might have been first, uh, but um, definitely Point Break is kind of like, it's almost like the... The little brother? Ah, you like, yeah, yeah, but kind of like, you know, it's like a more fun version. It's like, you know, and there's a bit more... Um, yeah, the chat in it is a bit more kind of... Yeah, you like hanging around with those guys. It's like a Lost Boys, you know what I mean? They kind of like enjoy hanging around with a little crew. Little Gary gang. Busey. Gary Busey is amazing in that movie, man. <laughs> Wild um, man. Oh, the best, man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I, listen, I just spend a lot of time listening to Gary Busey interviews. Yeah. His near-death experience story, I think, is really stunning. And uh, I think people should check out. It's pretty fascinating. Yeah, I don't know too much about yeah, that. Yeah, he had, had a bad motorcycle accident and... Um, yeah, he goes into detail about kind of being in a different plane and it doesn't sound like he's lying and it sounds quite like um, a real possibility for yeah. what, you know, what it could be like if there was an afterlife. It's, just, it's uh, fascinating. Yeah, he's a uh, really cool cat, man. I think he's great. I'd, I've not seen him, but where's he been, man? I seen know, in a while. I think people have cancelled him, to be honest. Oh, uh, did he, did he get, I oh, do, I oh know. God, I know. Everybody's they're all getting to come, man. We lost my money. <laughs> Hell, man, I can't believe we lost my money, man. <laughs> and obviously, Tom Sizemore's in that. He's in he, and he's in True Romance, so he's in like three of the best Yeah, movies. man, he's got, he's, how good is this scene in Point Break? Oh, it's the one of the best, like, one scene, like, just delivers, like, he's just so angry, like, Fucking mess with my case. It's so up that scenery. It's so, so much. good, man. Yeah, like he was like, um, yeah, man. He just disappeared as well, didn't he, man? Yeah. Right yeah, yeah. I think he's actually um, in hospital at the moment. I think he had a brain aneurysm. Oh, don't God, don't so, say that. Oh, um, fuck, man. We wish him all the best. best yeah, that. man. Jesus, um, I, know that, I loved yeah. him and uh, Sean Penn's wee brother and uh, True Romance. You know the. the oh the, yeah, yeah, Chris Penn, man. Uh, Chris, oh, by the way, Chris Penn. Penn, man, is another one. Chris Penn is one of the most underrated actors. Chris Penn and Reservoir Dogs. Like, he might be the best thing in Reservoir Dogs and just gets none of the credit. Like, yeah. Larry, stop pointing the gun at my dad! <laughs> like, he proper goes for it. Like, he does not hold back. And then he was in Abel Ferrara's The Funeral. Mm. And I think that is, like, one of the most Academy Award Warfare performances ever committed to film. Um, yeah. He plays such a dark... Horrifically troubled character and just absolutely nails it, man. And he just he's just one of those actors that's never got their due, man. Like um Yeah. Yeah, he just he deserved better. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And took far too soon as well. I know it was heartbreaking, man. The last thing I think I saw him was Entourage. I remember he showed they oh, did man. a scene in that. Yeah, love man. That show. Yeah, yeah, man, yes, yeah, I loved that. It was so good, man. I know, man. It's strange how much time has <laughs> changed though, man, since then. It's like you know, we would never get away with it now. No, they would definitely not. No. The podcast is really good. We listen to the podcast a lot. They do, and um it's really good. Dad had Ed Roberts on it, funny enough, another week. Right. And uh, it was a great episode, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. that's pretty um, awesome. I was just about to ask, do you have you got any podcasts that you like, or did you you got like ones that you tune in? Yeah, all man, time? yeah, man, I, 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 I got into the podcast thing early, man. So I was like listening to the first was Smodcast. I was listening to Kevin Smith's like mm -hmm. uh, ten years ago. I got into that. I started like Kevin Pollack's one got me pretty early. I don't think that exists anymore. Um, and then you know I went down the usual route of you know Joe Rogan and everybody else. Boom, 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 boom. And um, yeah, but I love it. Yeah, that's, that's, I spend most of my life doing that. You know, I think podcasts are like you know, you know, it's not Jonathan Ross or Graham Norton anymore. You know, what I mean, people want to promote something. It's like you're, you're getting your your people on podcasts. It's not on TV anymore. TV's dead. It's um. Yeah, it's a strange time, man. It's just we're in a transitionary period, I think. And I, I, I was talking to someone earlier about this. Is like people go to study journalism and become yeah. like interviewers, and here's me just rocking up, no experience, just being like with an idea, yep. and I'm learning how to do it as I go. That's There's what I did. With, that, that's yeah. what I did with screenwriting and directing. Yeah, I just rocked up and uh, won it, and it's worked out kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, before we get into uh, um, the process and that, I just want to ask, what's your take on Kevin Smith? Do you, do you, do you appreciate him? Oh, or? man, I, I loved Kevin Smith, man. So I remember, like, um, like what you're talking about when you discovered the LA Takedown, like, I think the first one for me was, it must have been about, it must have been eight or nine, I got mad mole rats on VHS. Mm. And I loved that. I loved hanging out movies. Like, I, I also, yeah. I, still, I still want to really make one. Um, so I love movies where it's just people hanging out and talking. And, um, I saw Mole Rats and I remember one night chasing Amy was on Channel 4. Mm. 
and I could tell it was a bit too advanced for me. I was trying to work out what was going on, like the story wise, it was a bit heavy. Like then Jane Silent Bob showed up and I was like, that's the guy some ball rats. I'm waking my dad up and I was like, they've got a little cameo. <laughs> and then I did kind of start to get doing my research as I got older and um yeah, man, Kevin Smith. So I think I think he's just a, just a really great human being. And yeah. um, I know not every movie is beloved or like, you know, but you know, man, Kevin Smith makes movies for him and his fans, and I'm one of his fans. And Aye. I'm like, you know, and I think there's something admirable about that. And uh, Are there certain snobbery where, where definitely, it comes to man. His movies, like... I don't think it's fair, but I also I think Red State's like a, a little masterpiece. I think Red State was great. Absolutely. Yeah. My first film that I saw was Dogma. Oh, amazing! Yeah, dog was great, man. Still, yeah, yeah, it's powerful. Nostalgic for me is uh, is, is and it's like got a film I go to. Alan Rickman, Chris Rock. It's got one of the best guys, Linda Fiorentino. It's uh, I don't know how the hell I think she was one of my first loves, actually, Linda Fiorentino, <laughs> and uh, Jade with David Cruz, maybe in the last seduction, and. Uh, yeah, man, I'll do yeah, London Fontino, man. Yeah, sorry. I don't know. How the hell did he pull that cast off? I know. That was, I know. That was him when he was there, man. I, know, I do feel like he, man, does, he could have went a whole different. It's weird. I do think the trajectory that John Favreau got from Swingers made in like Iron Man, you know, and like yep. taking over and kicking off the Marvel Universe. It's kind of what was probably meant to happen for Kevin Smith, and it just didn't work yeah. out. Because Kevin Smith has so much love for that world. And, yep. and um, I feel like he did have it and then we do the same thing. He just, I don't know what it is, man. It just it didn't, it didn't gel together. Yeah. And I saw John Favreau saying that he thought Elf was the thing that launched him. Yeah, yeah, made that, definitely, yeah, man. It's, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he is a really good director as well. Oh, 100%, you know, man. Yeah, made, the, it's one of my favourite movies. Everybody, I, I love Swingers, man. So I love breakup movies, man. I think <laughs> I, I break up a lot. But so, I Swingers is uh, a, a masterpiece. And then, but me, everybody kind of, I think, puts made to the side but made as like some of the best Vince Vaughn scenes you'll ever see <laughs> and again that's kind of like the same scale as he's just been frustrated not getting cast in anything and they've just went and made a movie themselves definitely like, man and that, I still look at that formula that he did my actually Swingers is one of the scripts that I first had that I um, taught him how to write scripts where I would, I would read the script for Swingers and watch a film and I learned the formatting from that mm -hmm. and uh, so that's, there's still stuff I do in scripts that uh, that people in Scotland don't do in scripts that is actually stolen from John Favreau's 1994 Swingers script. So it's uh, yeah, um, it's interesting. But I, uh, uh, that thing he did too, where he put it on as a play, mm -hmm. uh, got all the cast, put on a play, and went producers to see it. And like, I still think about doing that sometimes, you know, because it's like you know, they're, they're trying to get something off the ground is so heartbreaking, man. Mm -hmm. It's like it's um, yeah, it's tough, man. It's a tough game it's, uh, yeah that was actually one of my questions later on was that i'd heard that you'd like to read through scripts from other movies that you yeah liked. man i mean processing scripts is different from writing a book in it so it's, oh, it's, like, it's, it's hard um, i mean it's easier i mean writing a book to me is hard like writing a book to me is like so difficult with scripts it's it's it's, people think it's more difficult because there's like li lingo you have to learn but it's very skeletal and it's all very easy to remember if I was writing a book I'd be like what if, did I write back at the beginning and then go back and then yeah, uh, like, I, I'm, I love writing scripts but I hate rereading them <laughs> so. is, is there like different types of scripts is there like right, that's the script of the movie and then there's a filming script is it, is it different like, I mean, very slightly yeah there is there's a shooting script man but it's not there's not much difference really no it's um there's not much difference really, but everybody's got a different style. Like if you read the Michael Mann script, he'll spend like, you know, four paragraphs telling you how uh, Tom Cruise's character was institutionalised a kid and all that and all that stuff. It's not in the movie. But as uh, the way I write and thank uh, Swingers and John Fabric and it was kind of very you know, I think the why one of the reasons I've succeeded is I make my scripts easy to read. Mm. They're very boom, boom, boom. I don't go overboard on like telling people too much. It's like very like, how do you get this across in the least amount of words as possible? And I think that genuinely Jedi mind tricks people into thinking this is easy to read. Oh, this is fun. This is good. Yeah. I think they, I think they think it's good just because it's easy to read and it's probably not that good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and what what's your process for writing? Have you, have you got like a specific structure or do you? I don't just... mind. You know, I still need to find one. I, I like I lie to myself and I say yeah I do, but usually my structure is. Wait until last minute and then just write it terrified. Yeah. <laughs> um, but and I, I, I do, I need to, the, the idea usually, like, I mean, my writing doesn't happen at the laptop, man. That's only 
a small part of it. Mm. It happens walking about the city centre, looking like a psychopath, mumbling to myself probably. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just everything, playing out storylines and coming up with characters. Um, I think I've got all the mind for film. Yeah. But none of the drive. See, to actually get it down and be like, right, I've got this idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I then... Because I struggle with dialogue, uh, see, yeah. communicating. That, yeah. That's what I was like... I could tell you what the guy was wearing. I could tell you what shot it was to yeah, look like. Yeah, 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 You know, I, I, it's just the dialogue that's missing, and that's the big part of scripts. Yeah, so. but I mean, weirdly, I think that's the one thing I'm good at, and I'm not good at the stuff you said, man. Like, I'm weirdly, I think the... I think I've got, you know, maybe mild schizophrenia, where it's like, I, can, it's, I just get the characters chatting to each other in my head, and then it kind of all flows from that. Like, everything I write comes with character, which is a problem as well when I'm... I've been writing for TV a bit, and... Um, for shows that probably will never happen, I think. Uh, I think the BBC are waiting to see how Dog Days does. <laughs> and is that, that is that the case? Is it is it like they wait and see what? Because you've given them so much yeah. uh, content for them to look at and be like, right, this is a competent director here. What the fuck else do I need to do here? Yeah, <laughs> well, then that's how I feel. But uh, <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, man, I probably shouldn't be saying this. Yeah, but the word in the street is. One of the head honchos of BBC, I think, is literally openly said, uh, you look, "Let's wait and see how Dog Days." So all my TV stuff I had going has kind of been put on pause and it's kind of a terrifying prospect. Um, yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So, so and then again, more anxiety. Uh, yeah, 100%. And then also Dog Days isn't for everybody, man. It's a low-budget thing. And um, people were like, my work, you know, like they'll like it, but there's going to be a different... It's not for everybody. It's it's, mm-hmm. it's quite a niche project. It's, so it's a... Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in this terrifying zone where I'm kind of... I'm, it's almost nice, though, because I kind of feel like I'm... I'm very close to saying fuck it and just making my own little movie off my own back. And I think that was something I wanted to talk about was the frustration of lack of funding and lack of facilities. Yeah. And, you know, what do we need to do to get our creatives to be creative? Yeah. So why are we not letting that drive the country? You know no, what I mean? No, definitely, like, definitely, 100%. And, and like, yeah, man, like, even just like a space would be good for people to go and write, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'd like... I can't write at home, man. I need, I need out of there to write, man. Like, I just, it's, 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 mentally, my brain just doesn't work there. And um, I, I thought, is it something about us being Scottish? We've just got that mentality of, like, oh, it's never going to get picked up anyway, or we're, we're just, it's just a hobby, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, that's, that's the horrible thing. There's like, man, that's like, that's just amazing like, talking to you when I was coming in, you're, you're bigging me up, man. And, um, <laughs> and then it was at this, I was at the film festival opening another day. It was hilarious. So it's like, genuinely, man, the amount of, it was like, I'd be talking to somebody, somebody would come up to talk to them, they'd see me and my fucking two front teeth are missing right now and they'll be, they'll be fixing. <laughs> and uh, they would see me and they'd be kind of like, horrible, like looking to get away. The person would go, oh, we met James Price. And it, I, the amount of times I heard that night, you're James Price? Like, and it was very like insulting. You know, <laughs> like I, James Price is a wee normal looking idiot for spring. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you. He's, I'm sorry to let you all down. I'm a, I'm a fucking, yeah, I'm a very strange looking little dude that oh, talks you, like a bam. You're far, far too tough on yourself, No, man. but it's... And that's uh, coming from somebody yeah, who's yeah, far too yeah. tough on himself, but... But it's interesting, man. So it's like, I do think the more needs to be done, man. Yeah, we need, we need sp- spaces would be good. I think... I think, yeah, I know you're, you're a champion of like mental health and that as well, mm. man. So it's like, I do think there needs to be more done for, yeah, people's mental health in the creative industries because I think mm. there seems to be a common thread that, um, yeah, messes with a lot of people, man, you know, like, like it's hard, it's hard thing to... Yeah. I know, and it's, it's like that barrier of, um, like, your mental health playing into the fact that you're not getting the support that you need to do the thing that you want to do the most. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that that's the frustrating part because there should be some sort of budget. Like, we're speaking about Paul Morris coming on next week and I'll, I'll get into his stuff next week, but the fact that he did his on no budget... Definitely, man, I know, 100%. To... So that's basically, I'm kind of like, it's weird. Like, I know Paul looks at me as if, like, you know, I'm, like, I'm making stuff that's been funded and all that, but it's, man, it's not all it's cracked up to be. I'm looking to Paul. I'm mm-hmm. going to do what Paul's did. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to do now. Because to me, like, I need that. I need, like, I, I can't wait for permission anymore, man. And um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I can't hear one more time. I've got big plans for you, James. <laughs> Which I heard, and I'm like, what are these big plans? Yeah. I'm sitting in Bulgaria Road with Native. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> what, what are these big plans, man? I'm, I'm really excited to hear about them. Um, and I, so, and I just know for a fact, 
I'm fucking relentless, man. I will make a feature myself and it'll work. I know it'll work. I know, st- I know, like, I won't be hard on myself right now. I know storytelling. I know how to make a story work. I know what I want to see, so I know there'll be other people who want to see it. And I know that I can make a micro budget feature and I know it can work. And I'm, I'm going to do yeah. it. And that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now, man. Weirdly, I'm like, I've at a point where I'm like, fuck it all, man. I'm just going to do it. No, yeah. Definitely don't give in. I no, like definitely. That, yeah, that's yeah. one thing. Um, I'll come hunting for you. I you appreciate that, man. Yeah. But, Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With, with that, it's, it's frustrating because you're not asking for thousands and thousands of pounds. Hunter pound to a thousand yeah. pounds to a hundred thousand pound. Like, that's not a great. A huge amount of budget. No, by the way, but it helps a massive. Hundred percent, definitely, definitely, man, definitely. And it's like you know, weirdly, when you do the kind of bigger stuff for like TV and that, man, like the, it becomes a different thing because they pay everybody kind of like every, the money just kind of goes to the not always the correct places yeah. for the for the project. So it's um. It's almost like if you did it yourself with that amount of money, it's like you could pull off something really special by putting that money in the correct, you know, where it where it needs to go for the thing to be as strong as it can be. Yeah, it's seen too much as a business, and I know there's yeah. good money to get made, but you know, you need the people to make the stuff. No, definitely, to make money. yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. I know. Like uh, it seems to me, man, generally, like what I've learned, and it's a sad, sad fact. Paul, I think, is probably experiencing this right now himself. Is um. Scotland seems to be in the business of this man of the year. This will make me burn the name bridges, but I don't care. <laughs> um, Scotland seems to be in the business of keeping things in development, keeping people in jobs. Um, we just we just want things in development. Everybody can say, I've got this thing in development and it will never get made. And you'll be stuck in development, writing a thing for two years. And you'll pour your heart and your soul in it. You'll mind personal trauma. That's the problem with me, man. Everything I write is based on stuff. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like... like uh, it's really happened and yep. I've really experienced it. It's something hard to relive that. You know, it's like I've, yeah. I'm doing dog days. I've got a character taking a seizure on fake Valium, which I watched my older brother do like a month after my dad died. I watched this character, watched, yeah, and then so I'm watching this actor recreate that scene. Mm-hmm. And then to everybody else, and the, you know, it's like it's just a, yeah, it's just a scene, you know what I mean? But to me, it's yeah. like, no, like, we need, this is quite personal. And, and the, the, there is a, yeah, I don't know, man. The work I, that goes into that. Yeah, well, man, that's it. And, not... like, and from a writing point, point, like, so if I'm pulling all that into a page and into scripts that aren't going to get made just to keep these, you know, funders in a yeah. job, it's like that, when you realise that, it's quite disheartening, and you know? I'd, you kind of draw a lot from personal experience. I, I, I don't know how much. I know Boys Night you drew from experience. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. smashing a car and you walked them home. Aye, man, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. in a way, immortalises that. Definitely, man. In, in, in reality, by the way, it was a much more jovial night. It wasn't <laughs> as depressing as Boys Night. It was. The, 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 hard, the, the argument and the punch in the window, that was all pretty intense. But like the walk home was just like me and my dad having a laugh, him being steaming, and he wasn't much a drinker, so it was like... Uh, the actor in that, the really? dad. Oh, Cameron Jack, man. I can't, I'm, I'm dying to work with Cameron again, man. Cameron's because he's based down in England. Uh, I feel like I've lost class with him a wee bit, but I'll get him back. So, Aye, uh, what a performance. I know, I know. What, he's the best drunk I've ever seen, I think. Yeah, man, he's did great. No way, this, see, because we shot with order, he did, had a real great mental grasp on the levels of drunk. Mm. Like, and it was really like, you know, because I had my head, I was like, wow. wow. I think it was in the last scene, you know, this yeah. three days later. And it was like, so it was, uh, yeah, it was great. He's just a total natural. He was in um, Guy Ritchie's Rafa Man recently, and I remember watching it. This role, a really cool little role, and uh, he gets killed off Tom Hardy in Dark Knight Rises as well. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so he's, 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 a, he's, he's out there, man. He's going to take over the world. And, um, I cool cat, cool cat man, really good actor. And you had Brian McCarthy as well. Yeah, he's man. In your new project. He's in Dog Days. Yeah, he's in Dog Days too, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what an intense individual from when you're looking at his work, his body yeah. of work. You just think that's who he is. But yeah. is he as scary as that in real life? Yeah. No, I mean, no, yeah, no, yeah. He's a uh, no. He's not scary, but he's he's you know he's he's he's, 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 he's got a. You know he's got a gravitas. Mm. You know that doesn't leave him. He's got he's got that energy of a man who's. He knows what he's doing, you know what I mean? So he's um but he's a cool cat, man. He's he's been a big supporter. And uh 
I call him a Scottish Harvick I tell. I think he's got that vibe. Aye, aye. And, he's, uh, he's, he's honestly like uh, everything I've seen him in, I've been like, I would not want to meet that guy. Yeah, man. No, either like, that's or no. He's a sweetheart, like in, in real life. <laughs> but uh, but there is, um, yeah, it's a charisma thing. You know what I mean? This he's got a natural kind of cool, just that just professionalism. Yeah. Uh, cool, and cool what bit. is it about Scottish cinema that seems like uh, that we tend to focus on real subjects? It's not glitz and glamour, Hollywood, like yeah. Is, what is it about? Because obviously, like Peter Mullen, uh, an absolute legend, yep. kind of started. I, I don't really remember too many people making short films before him. No, in man, that, to be honest, man, I think those were the ones that kind of blew my mind. Like, I, I actually, close, like Peter Mullen is still my favourite short film, probably. Aye. I love it so much. It's like a Scottish taxi driver, I think yeah. it's a masterpiece. Um, it kind of reminds me of the character he plays in Session 9. You know oh my it, god, I can't believe we've seen Session 9. When, I, I, was, I was all I asked him about. I, I, I really want to tell a story now. When I directed him and uh, I directed him on a BBC4 show called was Skin, it was, a, it was mind blowing. Mm. But genuinely, him, like, yeah, me, I must have been so fucking, like, by the end, like, I need to get the fuck away from this wee bum. But, um, <laughs> no. but genuinely, like, it would be like, we'd do a scene, we'd cut, and I'd be just like, that was amazing, Peter Man, that was great, perfect, let's move on, guys. And I'd be like, Pierre, this David Cruz will sound. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> what's David Cruz like? <laughs> and he was like, David Cruz was great, man. But, but he, he told a really interesting story about Session 9, man. Um, I don't think he'd mind me repeating. Mm. But uh, he said that was the only time in his life he said, like, a supernatural experience. He says it was, they were shooting a, one of the intense scenes at the end. I don't want to spoil it. But by the way, Session Nine's a movie nobody saw that yeah. everybody should go and watch right now. Made by the director and the machinist. Yep. We're right under the radar, man. It was my director friend Zam Salim who uh, got me onto it. Masterpiece, man. Like, real masterpiece in the haunting. Like, yep. real haunting. And really just atmospheric. And it's kind of alien, that yep. little claustrophobic thing. But I, Peter's about to shoot a really intense scene. And I think he had to get himself psyched up. And uh, they shot in a real mental asylum. And it was it was shut down. And um, there was, like, these horrible writings on the wall. Like, really, really dark stuff. Like, stuff that you wouldn't repeat. Like, really horrific. Like, yeah, just, like, yeah, like, horrible stuff. And uh, just had a lot of, like, you know, all the pain that was still on those walls. But he went into a back room that I think might have been, like, some uh, holding cell or something in the past. And um, he was sitting in there, and he just said he heard the word, Peter. And... He was like, that's one of these fuckers fucking with me. And, yeah, uh, and exactly it what I thought there when you said uh, that. But it wasn't. And um, he said the most scary thing about it is it was welcoming. It wasn't like trying. It was like it was almost like telling him, like, come here, Peter. Like, come here. And, like, and, uh, he said that's the only time he's ever had any type of supernatural experience was in that that's wild. Uh, old yeah, mental asylum. Man. Yeah, because like, I think... How good is Session 9, I, man? I expected I'm it. so happy you've seen that. I expected it to be more of that kind of, like, supernatural... It goes for that vibe. Yeah, and man. Then and then at the, the end, it becomes end. close. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And I'm sitting there watching that thing. I don't know what's going to happen. If yeah, same, same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but no, I absolutely loved it. I love that more. I just love it when it, when it goes to the end. It's, you know, it's, I don't want to say anything, man, but it's, it's amazing. It's such a cool ending. It's fucked up, but it's an amazing ending. Yeah, yeah and, that, and when I was watching Close... I'd, I'd watched Close when I was younger and then I watched Close um, after Session 9 and Aye. the characters were kind of it gave me vibes it is I don't know they'll put that together but you're bang on man you're bang <laughs> on uh, yeah, it actually does uh, I can't see anything about spoiling it so how did that come about I know that you've worked with him now and was it did you meet because you were going to work with him or did it, was it just a random meeting how did it come I'd met him before that I man so that was a thing man it was um my dad passed away in 2020, my dad was really close, and uh, Sorry to hear that. I think everybody was, you know, worried about me at the time, and uh, they're probably still worried about <laughs> um, I'd written a feature length script, and one of my producer friends, David Brown, was like, he knew he loved, he knew how much a Mullen fan of Orphans is my, mm -hmm. one of the reasons I'm making movies, is what I mean, it's probably one of the main reasons I'm doing it, and uh, he was like, why don't we write Peter a letter and ask him if he'll, like, mentor you on this and we'll attach him yeah, it, was a, it was a blazing driven project it's kind of it's been put in stasis a little bit by me right now because I've just not I've kind of lost grasp of it a little bit so I need to kind of get back on top of it it's a project called Street Hassle it's kind of loosely based on the Lurid song um, but I wrote this yeah so man you know my doctor's upped my diazepam prescription at this point and um, <laughs> got my grieving prescription and uh, 
I write this really heartfelt two page email, not a word document, mm. PDF document to Peter Mullen. And my producer sends Peter Mullen Boys Night. As soon as Peter Mullen watches Boys Night, he's like, Amazing. I tell me come in my, my house in the morning, give my number. And then I'm like, Don't send him a letter. If he's agreed already, send him a letter. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'll send the letter. And I was like, Fuck, he's agreed to meet me. And he's got this two page and sign letter that reads like a Travis Bickle manifesto. You know what I mean? Jenny, it's like, here is a man who would not take it anymore. It's like, I was like, he must have just thought, oh, fuck, who am I meeting tomorrow? <laughs> you know, it's like, I've agreed to meet this week. And then he's got this two pages email after it. Um, but it was amazing, man. I absolutely. So you went up to Sus? Aye, man. He went up to Sus, man. And uh, so aye, man, we sat in this garden area. And. I I, I I know this I, this, is where, this is where I swore on the Michelle McManus podcast. I won't, I, won't, I, I know I can smell now. Thank fuck. Is uh, I was I sitting like this man and in my head I was just like motherfucker's gonna have to go bully Jason Bateman in Ozark. He's gonna fucking he's gonna be an elf and all all the rings. Yeah. I'm not gonna take up too much his time. I'm we idea for Springburn. I'll I know. So I was like I'll arrive at twelve p.m. I'll leave at one. That's what I mean. I'll leave at one. I'll leave at one. The first half hour was just me literally like, <laughs> stumbling and mumbling. And uh, he has such a G like at knowing how to make people chill out around him because he's, he's used to, you know, he's, he's used to people kind of flat him, like panicking on him. And he's such a natural at like, the camera. Yeah. But I went to 12, go to one, and I instantly just stood up and was like, Peter, man, thank you so much for this, man. This was great. And he's like, James, no, no, James, 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 man, just sit down, sit down, sit down. He's like, I need to go to, I need to go to town and get my boy's phone fixed. He's like, sit down, man, I'm, 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 no, I'm not done yet. And then we sat down, man, and it went, we, we talked till like five o'clock. And then he, he walked me for his house, like way, way deep, deep south side. Yeah. To the city centre. One the way, he's taking me to the close, where he's like, this is where we shot close. Fuck. He's taking me to the back garden. He's like, this is where we made fridge. He's like, give me the, the Peter Mullen short film to the south side, which is fucking mind blowing. And by the way, the fucking fridge location looks worse than who. <laughs> and then, 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 man, and then, then we get into tune, and he's going up, and I would get walk up Jamaica Street, and he's gone up, and I'm like, I need to like let him go at some point. And I was like, I'll put my, I'm going to shit this way and get the bus. And I was like, thank you so much, Reverend, man. And, uh, Aye, he just walked up to get his boy's phone fixed, man, but strolling about. And I'm, yeah. I'm my head, I'm like, he walks, probably walks with like five security girls or whatever. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how it works with like, proper actors. Um, but the most normal, coolest G, like, charisma, man, like, uh, and this was the thing, man, he said, so I, I won't, I, I can't repeat it, but it was like, uh, just we were chatting, like, I mean, we were chatting, like, 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 chatting like normal Boys, man, I mean, so, but he said something to me that only my dad said. And, it, like, weirdly, just a weird synchronicity, he said this line that my dad said. Uh, and then when I wrote that skin monologue for the BBC, the character was based on my dad. Right. So right away, I was like, I wonder if, I was like, put it to Peter Mullen, man. And then Peter smashed it. And um, he was also, he was kind of like a producer type on it as well, so he was kind of attached to the project anyway. But he... Mm. Absolutely smashed it, and weirdly, like, didn't he? He probably would have liked to sit there and man, I had, I had a bunch of fucking, I missed a, I missed a bunch of phone calls. I had a, uh, I changed my number at the time, he didn't have a new number, so he was like, he probably would have liked to sit there and ask me more questions. But he didn't, he, he didn't even get to know much about my dad, mm. but for some weird supernatural fucking, I don't know if the two of them just have kind of similar backgrounds, um, he just encapsulated my dad's energy, man, like, just really? like without even. Knowing how, and I'd, I'd just magical stuff up, man. And, uh, that is wild. Ah, uh, beautiful man, beautiful. So that's, that's some BBC I play right now. It's called Skin. The episodes are taken of Bulgary Hill Street, but I couldn't call it Bulgary Hill Road because BBC wouldn't have it. <laughs> and it was actually meant to be the taken of one nine eight of one of any, some sort of number, as in the taken of Pell one one two three. Yep. Nobody at the BBC got that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, the, it's just called the taken of Bulgary Hill Street. But uh, Peter's amazing in it, man. And dead. I think another one with Michael Socker. Michael Socker's an amazing actor. He's in uh, uh, this England TV show. He had the bigger part. And uh, he's amazing. One of the best actors I've worked with. And uh, also, he's in that rudimental music video, which is fucking stunning. He's an amazing actor. I'm a really cool cat. Yeah. Peter Mullen, for me, is underrated as a director. 
and underrated as an actor. Hundred percent, man. Yeah, it's weird because it's like almost like. Um... Yeah, it's like he's, he's he's like one of the best character actors there is, mm. hands down. Like he's like the guy. He is the best character actor. Like you could put him. Those movies I watch when I'm like, this would be a better movie if that was Peter Mullen. Yeah. Like I watched that movie. What's that? It was a new Carlo Carlo Godino, is it? The uh, Bones and Bones and All. Bones and All. Yeah. The Mark Rylance role didn't do it for him. Like man, oh, yeah, for oh, fuck. Yeah, Mark yeah, Rylance doesn't do it for me. Yeah, but are you put Peter Mullen in that role, and then it's Christopher Walken in the addiction, yeah. and it's he's got an end, he's got power, and he's he's got a real you know it's Brian Cox and Lecter, it's the uh, you know it's he's got a real energy to him, and um, I just think that would have been a much better choice. I didn't like the way I didn't like the choices they made with the character. And I know that that maybe come from direction. Yeah, but I, I needed a bit more edge from that character because I, I knew the way where it was going with, with the character anyway. But I just, uh, uh, no, yeah. But and there's so many roles where I'm like, why the fuck isn't this Peter Mullen? <laughs> and is that a thing for you? Because for me, when I go to see something at the cinema and I, and I come away and I think I could fucking do better than that, I I could change that. Or do you always have your director's hat on when you're watching a movie, or can you step back from that and appreciate it for what it is and what the director was going for? I can do both because uh, because I know how fucking hard it is, <laughs> and I know how much shit probably went wrong on the shit and all that. But, uh, I sometimes can be forgiven, yeah, anyway, but yeah, no man, like story wise, if something doesn't really, if I think something could have took a better turn, like, yeah, man, I can't help but notice so. You know, it's like, yeah, man, no, I, it's weird. I, I post, you know, I, when I get lost in a film, that's usually a sign that it's, it works, you know, and, and uh, when I'm not thinking with my director hat on, that's usually a sign the movie's doing its job. Yeah. And do you, like, when you're writing and you're, you're, you film your projects, do you be like, right, that one's done, on to the next one? Or do you kind of let it sit? Like, are you constantly chasing your next project? Or are you, like... Um, right, I've written that and I've filmed that and that's my focus and I'll do all the press and I'll do all of that. Yeah, or, yeah. Or do you ever think, right, I want the next one? No, it's weird because you don't know. It's like, it's like um, as I said, it seems like a big pause has been hitting on my, on my projects. So it's like, I don't know what my next one's going to be. Literally after dog days, I have nothing on the horizon. That I've, that I've Now that I think about it, I have nothing. Like, um, which is kind of freeing in a weird way and it's kind of given me a... Yeah, so it's kind of like, I'm just kind of thinking about just doing something a bit radical. Yeah. Which my agent will hate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, uh, yeah. What, I'm about, about, what about collaboration? If you had somebody that would you be like, we could do something together and and bounce off each other? Do you like collaborating or do you like kind of, this is my project and I've, I've, I've got this and I've got my vision and yeah, you might you know, it has to be the, it just has to be the right thing. Like I, I was me and my the director the right I the director of dropping off Michael, mm. with the short film that I wrote. Me and him were developing that as a feature for a while. And he, have, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but that would have been fantastic as a feature. Yeah, man, look, man, look, it's not, it's on the ropes. It's not bleeding out. It's still, it's still a, there's a chance. <laughs> um, but he is, uh, he's great at the, the, I'm, everything I write comes from character. I'm bad at kind of plot. Everything for me is led by character. So I'm like, the, the plot is led by the character, which is bad in TV, by the way, because it's like, you know, they need to know, like, what happens in episode six? I don't know what, I don't know what Joe's going to be up to in episode six. I'm someone <laughs> on episode two. I don't know what you're about. Like, I need to find that. Um, so it's it's interesting, but he's an amazing that like just like go up, kind of like boom 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 this happens this happens this happens mm. boom go back and then so me and him had a kind of deal set up where it was like he would come up with the he would do the stuff that I hate in terms of writing the treatment and outline and I would write the script right. and I actually wrote a hundred page script to I drop off make a feature in three days wow yeah yeah I think I think it may have been a mental breakdown I don't know but uh, <laughs> I read the back recently man I actually think it reads really well and uh, I'd, I'll only people saw it with me and Zam and uh, I think it worked it definitely will work the, the, the story it does work it's um, me and Zam are just really passionate about not making it the short again yeah and it seems like <laughs> Souls that got unnamed yeah. just wanted a big version of the shot. Yeah. And it's like, no, it's like, no, we've made the shot. 
let's take that shot and see build upon it and see you know let's take it into the night let's take it into an odyssey yeah you know let's go good time safety brothers or something like that that, yeah. was, that was the plan you know and and I, I suppose that's a good way that you've got the short that because you've made the short you could revisit it and i suppose if you filmed the short and it's out there you're like fuck i would do this differently or do that differently and then you could put that in the feature and then it's like yeah there's your feature idea yeah yeah and, um, definitely definitely yeah. And you grew up watching horror movies, which is something we talked about earlier nah, on. Man, yeah, man. Uh, you mentioned Jason Takes Manhattan, and I was like, that was me, man. That, that was my favourite. <laughs> that was my favourite. And I'm actually chuffed this new scream seems to be going in that direction. Well, I haven't seen it yet. No, um, is it? No. Uh, it's coming out uh, next Friday. Aye, next so they've, they've, just dropped, they've dropped to in New York. Yeah, and, then, and even the poster's the same as the, yeah. the Jason Takes Manhattan poster for back in the day. So. Um, I'm, uh, I am quite excited about that. And Friday the Thirteenth uh, and Nightmare on Elm Street. You were saying, yeah, you were man, free man, Dream Warriors, yeah, all day. And also Freddy's Dead. I love Freddy's Dead. <laughs> I love the one where they put uh, the guy in the video game, mm. and uh, Johnny Depp shows up in the cameo and like this is your brain on drugs. And yeah. all that. man, I, I love Fred. When the idea was, you got the VHS, you got the 3D glasses, the green and the blue. Yeah. It was amazing, man. That blew my mind as a kid, man. Would you ever do a horror movie? Hundred percent, man. So that's my thing too, man. It's like I feel like I've been, you know, I have been pigeonholed as the social realism, mm. gritty Scottish guys. But uh, anybody that knows me knows that I want to make stuff that's a bit more higher concept. And uh, but also fuse those worlds, you know, mm. like like yeah, like take Jason takes Manhattan and mix it with orphans. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I know it's insane, but you know. But I want to like play with it. And that one other short film I did called Spiral, mm. which kind of was like my psychotic spin on Groundhog Day. Yeah, and that's that is the kind of stuff I want to be making. That is, that is who I am. People who know me know know that, and people who don't know me think I just want to make depressing Scottish films about depressing people. But there is there is an <laughs> element of of kind of scariness and that realness of, of, of your films because it is so real you could walk easily walk down the street and find characters like your characters oh yeah definitely and, definitely uh, definitely yeah 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 they're, yeah. they're like you, you wouldn't approach them or you wouldn't want to get in a fight with them no 100 yeah 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 so yeah. there's a kind of scary aspect with, with, no, being a de- de- 100%, uh, no definitely no definitely and i don't look man and i do i think that that is it's also really important to me like whatever the story is like it's kind of you know it's authentic and um and I then sadly, man, I think I became one of the people for most people, by the way, man. Like, yeah, I think, uh, when I was at that film festival opening, it was just like the people were kind of looking at you and then, like realizing who you are, realizing that was James Price. Yeah. This, this is James Price, the people, he seems to have some promise. I don't know what this dude is. This one, <laughs> this one that everybody talks about. But um, when they realized who I was, it would go from like, they would cross the street to avoid me on the sunniest of days to, Oh my god, I'm so excited for dog days and blah 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 blah. And uh, so sad, I think I became one of the dodgy, scary looking people in Glasgow. So I need to get my teeth fixed, man. <laughs> and I need to keep, soon, yeah. keep it out an intimidation factor. Just I, in that, case. that was the reason that was I was acted in a short film and um, I t- I had two crowns had popped out and I kept them out for the short film and I've fucking lost them <laughs> so now I'm just too terrified to go to Denny's to find how much it costs <laughs> check all your pockets in case you've got those two teeth lying about I've got one I do have one I did find one man but yeah the other one I think is on the streets of Sucky Hall and gone forever <laughs> I thought you yeah. were going to tell me you were going to do the Shia LaBeouf like he took his teeth out for, oh, for yeah, that's, that's, that, yeah, that's what we that's what we called it but it, it wasn't it fell out and it just kind of was like a happy accident but, uh, I absolutely love Shia I know a lot of people are too hung up on what he's doing outside of the film, but see in yeah. camera, what a magnificent Listen, man, actor. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, um, look, I'm sure this is a, maybe controversial, but I would, I just, I would advise everybody to go watch uh, Shy on John Bernfall's podcast. Yes. He did recently. Oh, man. Um, look, man, the guy, he's got some demons, man, and, like, and he's... Like, but that podcast uh, was a wake up call for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've not been making the best decisions in life at times, and um, I think it's a really important podcast they made there. And uh, it, it, I think he did really well taking accountability for yeah. his. You know, he didn't. He didn't shy away from saying you know he was a problem, and then uh, and yeah. like uh, yeah, look, man, I don't. I'm, I'm not completely clued up on what happened. I know the story's not great, man, but um, fucking. Yeah, yeah, one of the best actors. That, I, don't that, get, I mean, I, I mean, this like, like this whole like you need to separate the art from the artist thing. It's like 
I remember seeing a guy to recognise your saints and it felt like he was playing me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I felt like that was me in spring when that's who I was. That was the that was the kind of the, the weaker kid who was looked after after the, 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 the boys that could fight. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, yeah, I've always had a real aff- affinity for Shire, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny, a guy to write, uh, recognising your saints you just mentioned there. Um, I was working in a clothing shop in the high street called River Island and... Uh, yeah. Martin Compton came in. Yeah, he's this in was, that. He's got a scene in that. Yeah, this yeah, was yeah. Long, long way before, way before he, the, yeah. he's got as, as big as he was. And he spoke to me for about 45 minutes and I, and I called him out and I was like, I just watched your movie last night. And he's probably thinking, no, sweet 16. Yeah, see, and I yep. was like, no, I get to recognise your saints. And he was like, oh. Nice, Didn't realize man. anybody saw that, but yeah, man. he took the time to speak to me. And, that's beautiful, man. And I, Martin's somebody I've not met, man. So that's uh, that, he's one that's been on my list, man. Uh, um, I know I'd love to meet Martin, man. I think he's a amazing actor, and I, I just want to get him. I want to get him doing a fucking Glasgow accent again. <laughs> yeah. Fucking lost him with the uh, lost him to the England, man. But he's uh, he's amazing. I'm actually writing the um, the TV stuff, one of the TV things, one of the developments with World Productions to do Line of Duty and uh, his stuff. Uh, the what was the other one? What's the one they killed him off very quick? Was it Vigil? They kill him off in the submarine? Does he die yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't watch it, but yeah. I always thought his character should have had a Scottish accent in Line of Duty. I ah, just thought yeah, it yeah. Been... But I also think he's an actually really amazing accent. He did... Did you see Piggy? No. There's an amazing little movie, man, which is Dead Man's Shoes meets, like, Fight Club. Right. Uh, but it, it's handled with such care. Like, I'm a massive despiser of post Fight Club movies, like Secret Window, even Shutter Island a little bit, to be honest, man, that's controversial. Oh, that's but, controversial. But yeah, it's any movie where I can tell in the first 10 minutes, it's like, all right, that motherfucker's no real. Or like, this isn't, you know what I mean? It's like, it's so, I can tell it's a figment of his imagination. I'm out. But he did one called Piggy with uh, Paul Anderson from, uh, he's in Piggy Blinders now, really amazing actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, his brother's Neil Maskell, who's an actor I'm obsessed with working with. Mm. Um, his brother gets murdered, and then this character just shows up, who claimed to be his brother's friend, and he just kind of exacts revenge. But he did an English accent in that, and it was the first time I'd seen him do an accent, and it's flawless, man. Yeah. And actually, I remember <laughs> I was doing an audition. I was I was just I was just so desperate to break into the industry from about 2011, 2012. Uh, that I would like audition for student short films, not just to be a run, right? Just to try and get people reading my scripts and stuff. Yeah. So I like stole roles for real actors man it was probably wrong of me but um, <laughs> well, one of our producers Cam is uh, an actor so um, he's through there you may be able to chat to him ah him amazing yeah movies. definitely definitely uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's telling me that he was in a, a couple of wee short films cool so, man cool 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 uh, cool yeah, you might bite your hand off for that aye 100% 100%, 100%. <laughs> I'm just going to put a minute <laughs> aye no, man, no definitely man yeah 100% yeah man I always thought we're missing a Scottish Avengers, not a comic book movie, yep. but just getting all Scottish actors together. Yeah, man, and definitely. I, I, I'd, I'd thought of a plan for that, and, and I was like, great, a three-part series about the military. Yeah. And have all your actors coming in. I mean, can you imagine some of these Scottish actors like Peter Mullen being like sergeant majors? And yeah, all that, man. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like Robert Carlyle and all that. I know, all I know. Just great... get them all. I know, just get them all together. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You're right, man. It's like it's. Yeah, it's strange. You lose. It's weird, man. Just like when you lose them, you lose them to America. <laughs> Peter Mullen's one of the few that comes back. I but, know. But you, Robert Kaleo, man, have lost them to fucking don't know Stargate, fucking Atlantis or whatever, man. But, but, but you know, but you're, James McAvoy. So once you're that James McAvoy level, yeah. they're, they're gone, man. They're fairy dust. There's like they're, they're, you can't you can't pull them back for a wee Glasgow movie. Yeah. You know they're too big. They're I too know. too. They're, they're, they're the planets. You know. <laughs> so it's um. Yeah, it's strange. If you had to put one of them in a movie, where would it be? Oh. Out of the Scottish actors, whether it's Which past, actor? Or past or presence. Yeah. Mm. Good question. My, weirdly, do you know, man, this is a strange one to say, but I did... So in uh, Dog Days, this character goes viral doing sing a cover of Frankie Miller's Darling. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if everybody's here see Just the Boys game. Yes. So Frankie Miller's the lead in Just a Boys game. Then. Yep. And so this singer did this one movie, and I thought he's a phenomenal in it, man. And if, and uh, he's, he had a he actually had a brain aneurysm, and um, he still he's still with us. And uh, there's a great documentary about him. The magic's still there. You can still see it, man. He's still you know he's, he's you know he's he can't he's not as 
capable as he once was, but he's he's uh, that magic still behind the eyes, man. But um, yeah. I would love to have did a film with him, but I'd love to have got him back again, man, because I feel like he had a had such a fucking little edge to him, like that yeah. I, that, uh, Peter McDougall just got. I think it was, uh, was it John McKenzie. I think I made directed that. Um, but yeah, he played, he played quite a rough character in that. Didn't yeah, he? man. Yeah, yeah, man. I think there's a funny story. I can't remember. It's an old Scottish band. I was one of the music people hate me. It's a famous Scottish band, um, but apparently some record producer owed the money, so they went to Frankie Miller and they said, "Do uh, you know a bit and just the boys game? just stares at the boy mm-hmm. and the boy pisses himself." Yeah. They went to Frankie Miller and said, "Going to come with us and do that." And apparently Frankie Miller went in and they go, they go, they got the money. Oops. He just stared at this kid for, for, <laughs> and they got him the money, right? Which I thought was an amazing story. Uh, I, but Frankie Miller's a real deal, man. He's Jimmy Boyle's cousin. You yeah. know, like he's a. It's a gobble through the road. Uh, nah, it's been here. I think it be here. I think it's been here. I don't know. Uh, maybe, yeah. Uh. Nah, like, he's been be here. But like, he was a real deal. And um, weirdly, I know him. I actually reached out and tried to get him a flash. Tried to get him Concrete Flowers. I actually named the character Carlin McQuillan mm. to unofficially make him uh, Jake McQuillan's nephew, which right. I, don't, I don't think Peter McDougall would support. <laughs> 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 I, uh, I, no, I loved... Uh, I loved Just a Boys game so much. I think uh, it's a masterpiece. And... Uh, Still really powerful, still holds up. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And w- you were speaking about um, when we were chatting earlier on about reaching out to people and not getting anything back. And yeah, like, man. I-, I can't thank you enough for, for coming on the podcast. No, don't mad, man. You know, no, man, that's weird, bro. I feel bad for you. If I'm a get, I feel, I feel, bad, I feel bad for you, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but like, it, it's, it's well, one thanks of those for things. having me, man. I'd, I'd, I'd been reaching out to you. And I, I, I said, um, like, I, I, I didn't just want you on here because you're a Scottish filmmaker. I want you on here because I actually like your your films. Well, and, that means a lot, mate. And honestly, thank you so much. Man. You know, like the, the, that's what I'm saying. Don't give up. And no, definitely, definitely. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I want. I'm going to direct everybody towards where you can find. Um, ah, thank your you so films, much, man. Yeah, yeah. Where can people find you? Um, I'm on Instagram as Pricey Films. I've got a link tree, so it's link tr link slash tr dot ee. No, fuck link. TR.ee slash Pricey Films. I'm on that. <laughs> That's where you can find all my shorts, the BBC stuff, um, uh, links to just watch it easily. So you never know if anybody is wanting to be an actor or get, get in touch. And, uh, 100% like, by the way, because I, I, uh, I prefer non-actors, man, so <laughs> get in touch, man. I prefer non-traditional trained actors, so I feel... Uh, yeah, man, if you're out there and you're like, I've not done it, don't worry, just come, man. If, yeah, if you're up for improvising, <laughs> you'll be great. I know, I love that. Um, but thank you very much for coming on. We've Thanks just for having time, me, man. But... I, I'm so happy you've seen Session 9, man. You have no idea how many people <laughs> I tried talked about that movie and nobody's seen it. It's such a classic, man. David Cruz, man. Oh, excellent. Yeah, man. But thank, thank you very you, much bro, for listening you. and thank you for coming on, James. Appreciate it, man. And we'll be sharing James's film over social media. Thank you so much. Um, so thank you very much and we'll see you in the next one.